Technobrain, Africa's second fastest growing technology company. Africa came first, we came in second. Hello again everyone and welcome to Unstoppable. On the show this week, I'm talking to Harold Banguera, an amazing entrepreneur who heads a company, the Flame Tree Group, which was listed just last year on the Nairobi Securities Exchange. I'm Pete Ondeng, your coach, and this is Unstoppable. Hi, Hi Pete, welcome to Flame Tree Group. Thank you, thank you so much. What a pleasure to meet you. Pleasure for me as I've well. I've been looking forward to this conversation for some time. Welcome. <laughs> Now, Harold, let me begin by just congratulating you on the listing that took place last year. Now, the Flame Tree Group actually comprises several companies. This is just one of them, the Roto Group. Yes. Uh, what, what exactly happens here? Tell us about this. Yes, this is one of our subsidiaries. We manufacture plastic water tanks, a mm -hmm. brand called Roto. Okay. Actually, this company is very dear to us and dear to me as well because it's the first company that we started within the group about 25 years ago. 25 years yeah, ago? Exactly. You started the company then? Yes, when I was very young then. How old? I was 18 years old at that time, still a student. Tell us about that. What brought you into that story? Uh, well, it's a story where while I was growing up, uh, here in Nairobi, mm -hmm. I realized that there's something known as a tank up in the roof. Yeah. And uh, generally these tanks in those days were made out of steel, mm -hmm. which tended to rust. And uh, once in a while you wouldn't have water at home. And I realized it was uh, more pleasant having running water. Okay. And uh, we came up, uh, or I saw the opportunity to manufacture plastic water tanks. Mm -hmm. In those days, uh, plastic tanks were not the normal tank which you'd find around. And that's where you got uh, your teeth cut, you cut your teeth in business, with the family business? Or where did you, did you just jump into this? <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, my father was running his own uh, business at that time, uh, right. mainly in steel fabrication. Okay. And he was making uh, uh, various steel tanks and steel products. So I realized that what a steel tank is from, uh, from growing up at home right. and seeing what my father was doing. Mm -hmm. And I saw the opportunity to manufacture plastic water tanks. Yes, I felt there was an opportunity that I can go independently and start. Okay. But what really happened is once I finished my education and I came back, mm -hmm. then I could spend full time and we start growing the business from there. Which countries are you operating in at the moment? We operate in a number of countries, uh, in Ethiopia, um, Mozambique, mm -hmm. Rwanda, We've got operations in uh, UAE as well. So you're and Mozambique, all of did I mention? And Mozambique. Yes. Okay. And how many people do you employ? We employ about a thousand people. A thousand people. Yes, at the moment. So in this factory, you are doing plastic water tanks, and what other product lines do you have here? Within this factory, we make uh, plastic water tanks, but we make a number of products, over 200 products. 200 plastic uh, products. products. Yeah, we have products in sanitation, we make toilets, we make dustbins, crates, pellets, a whole lot of products. Uh, in the other locations, we do make PVC pipes. Uh, we've got another unit where we make packaging, mm -hmm. that's blow molded products. Mm -hmm. So we've tried to strengthen ourselves within the plastic industry as well. Okay. And you've obviously diversified, you know, when you talk yes, about the Flame Tree Group. Um, going back to 2003, you made a decision to, to move into other product lines. What led you into that, first of all? What happened is, as we started manufacturing plastic water tanks, we saw the need of plastic water tanks, not just in Kenya, but in the countries around us. So we started putting factories in a number of countries. And uh, what, when we, see, we looked at what was happening on the ground, is a lot of products that people were using and consuming at home, yeah. FMCG products in particular, mm -hmm. uh, were products which were made out of the country, or even if they were made in the country, they were ma made by Western multi multinationals, mm. which were making products at a price point which was not very affordable for the, the lo local, local population. Okay, so from plastic water tanks, you decided to diversify to... FMCG. FMCG, and With specifically... Cosmetics. Cosmetics. Yeah. And then we moved into food and we moved into synthetic hair, wow. so that we wanted to create a whole FMCG portfolio. Well, we want to see a bit of this. Um, I think the, it's in the same location we're in right yes, now? Yes, okay. I'll take you uh, next door behind this so Coming that uh, we can see it. Okay.
Okay, so here we are at the Flame Tree Group. This is Flame Tree Africa. This is one more of our subsidiaries. Okay. And uh, here we make cosmetic products. Uh, our famous brand, which is Zoe. So how is it doing uh, so far, your line of products? Our products are doing well. Uh, as you said, uh, or as you are aware, the FMCG sector within the country and within the continent is growing at a rapid rate. And so the opportunities within the businesses, FMCG, that we are operating in, is, uh, there's a lot of opportunity. What are some of the real challenges you faced, not just in this uh, Flame Tree Africa company, but also with the Roto, just as an entrepreneur climbing up this ladder? Pete, uh, being in business, uh, I always tell people is, if you don't have the challenges, then, uh, and you don't like the challenges, don't do business. Because it goes hand in hand with doing business. Exactly. And I feel uh, the charm or the fun of it is overcoming the challenges. And over the years, we've had hundreds and thousands of challenges. Tell us, tell us. <laughs> but, yeah, uh, but uh, some of the few that I can explain to you, which uh, are easy for you, uh, you to understand or comprehend, yeah. is uh, the initial ones. When I was starting, I was very young. I was 18. Yeah. Uh, nobody believes or understands or agrees with a younger person. If I was 20, 22 years old, going to a bank and asking for a loan, mm -hmm. and they'd think I'm out of my mind. I'd probably want to go to a nightclub. <laughs> but, but that was not. I had a dream, and I had the dream even at that time. Right. So that was a challenge that I had. Convincing people to believe in your dream. In, in, my, in our idea. Yeah. And then uh, what, what uh, worsened the situation is, here we were selling a product that is meant to last many years, uh, selling a product from uh, making people change from steel tanks to plastic thanks, right. we are conven convincing an architect or a contractor mm -hmm. who's about 50 years old, 60 years old, who's used a steel product all his years. Now a young boy going to tell him, please use something that's better. To so try to transition Convince consumers them, yeah. to a whole new it's, it's, line of thinking. Uh, it's a very difficult, it's a difficult challenge. How did you deal with that? I think it was, it was something that we did gradually over time. Yeah. And I think that kept us going is the belief that we have in the product and uh, seeing the way it was changing lives of the people that were using it. So the fact that we believed in it and we were passionate about it, we kept going. Uh, apart from those challenges, there's been, uh, I think, the general entrepreneur challenges capital. The major challenges to usually face here is the, on the availability of raw materials, because as you know, all the materials that you're using here is not locally available. We have to import from places like Korea, Saudi Arabia, and uh, what we normally do, Mr. Hill, as a person, has so many contacts outside. He knows all the suppliers. So what we normally do is we advise him on the best quality material, which is within his reach, which he can be able to get. And uh, from our quality control people and the technical people, we have to check on those uh, ingredients so that we can have our quality product. Last year, this is quite uh, interesting. Last year, you were listed on the GEM segment of the Nairobi Securities Exchange. That was quite a journey, wasn't it? Yes, the listing itself was a journey, right. but we, we have been gearing ourselves to listing over the years. Why it's, did you decide to list? Well, as uh, there's, there's many reasons. One of the reasons is continuity of the business, that we wanted to grow and scale up the business so that it could live beyond the founder, that's me. But. Uh, other reasons was to raise capital. I, I commend you for this. One, because uh, there are very, very many enterprises that shy away from this public scrutiny that comes with being listed on a, on a public exchange like this. How has this changed life for you? There's the upside that now you can scale up the business. Now we are uh, employees, forget about our customers, look at us differently. There's an opportunity, they realize that the, the company is going growing more from being a family-owned business to a corporate and that encourages people so I believe in that. Have you faced challenges like many companies we talk to in the human resource area finding the right skilled people to push your business forward? Obviously I think people are the most difficult uh, asset to get. Uh, I told you one of the challenges that we had is capital uh, but capital in itself is not the biggest challenge. If you have good people working with you, 
you'll find the capital. They will help you. They will motivate you. We work as a team. We have discussions when it comes to issues which are affecting the company. In case we have any challenge, we have uh, to discuss as a group, as a team. And uh, he's the leader. He's a very good leader. And uh, he shows us the way. Harold, doing business in Africa comes with its inherent challenges. And I think you know this as well as anybody else. Tell me about just generally working in this environment and what you've had to overcome as an entrepreneur. Well, uh, the way I look at it is I'm an African. Okay, this is my continent. This is my home. Where will I go? I know they, this, they claim in the papers that I read that there are challenges. But around me, I don't see the challenges. And uh, I feel uh, without the challenges, there isn't also the opportunity. Why is the market not filled with multinationals from the, from the Western world? Right. It's because they fear the, uh, the challenges. But for me, the challenges is challenges that we've grown up. Have you ever come to a place where you felt like quitting? Yes, <laughs> a number of times. Yeah. Uh, but what keeps me going? is uh, during those moments, I've just said the, that I have to succeed. There's no other option. There's no option to fail. Can you share with us some of your strategies going forward? What we plan to do for, for the near future is to strengthen those positions on those businesses. Uh, one of our key focuses is, is uh, always FMCG and to grow that as a Pan-African uh, business at the moment. You know, one of the challenges that most business people will tell you about, when they look back, they'll tell you about that one day when they thought they were going, not going to make it. They couldn't pay salaries, they, couldn't, they just couldn't pay the debts and so on. I don't know if you've ever faced a moment like that in your experience. We have faced and it's uh, something that has really been uh, something that has now built what I believe in. Uh, one of the most difficult periods was in 2008. Uh, when we had the oil uh, prices really fluctuate, uh, our profitabilities and our numbers were really difficult. We couldn't pay salaries, we couldn't pay suppliers. And uh, what happens in such a situation, it becomes a spiral effect where, where people don't supply you, then you can't produce, and then eventually the, the company was nearly coming to a standstill. But what kept us really going is, in spite of not being able to pay salaries, the people who were with us, the employees and certain suppliers stuck with us. And I realized that during a difficult time, a lot of people don't stay with you and leave abandon you, you. abandon you. Right. And uh, today we, we work with, we try to build relationships with people who will be with us thick and thin. Right. But for me, the people who really stuck with me during the most difficult times have been the employees. And uh, I always am very indebted to them, and I always uh, feel that I owe a lot back to them. Harold Bangera, what a pleasure. The pleasure is mine. Thank you so Thank much you. for taking time to talk with us. And there you have it, Harold Bangera, the CEO of the Flame Tree Africa Group, talking to us as an unstoppable entrepreneur. The journey continues next week. We'll be back. My name is Pete Ondeng. Goodbye. Technobrain, Africa's second fastest growing technology company. Africa came first, we came in second.